Hi everyone, in this video we're going to continue looking at technology in astronomy, focusing on a different instrument called the spectroscope. As usual, let's start with an overview. So we're going to talk through what is a spectroscope and what does it do, and then we're going to focus on the information we can get from starlight using an instrument like a spectroscope. So looking at temperature, looking at a star's composition, what elements it's made of, and then also its velocity, thinking about that stars are moving objects in the universe. And then we'll look at how a spectroscope can produce a spectrum that we can analyze and interpret. Okay, so let's start, you know, start by looking at what a spectroscope is. Okay, remembering that with our syllabus information, we're looking at some technological developments that have advanced our scientific understanding of the universe. Okay, so this is an image of the sort of spectroscope you might use in a school lab. Um, you know, actual, you know, astronomers would use something that's much more sophisticated than this, but this still does exactly the same job. So essentially its job is to split starlight into its component colours. So the visible light that we can see from a star and actually take it and rather than just white light to actually split it into the colours. Okay, it uses the process of diffraction or dispersion in order to do this. Okay, so think about, let's think about what information we get from starlight. Okay, we, we can find out about its temperature, how hot the star is burning its composition, so what elements it's made of, and also how fast it's moving through the universe. So we're going to go through each of these in turn. So looking at temperature, you can see there that we have different classifications of stars that we give a, a letter code to, and obviously it's not A, B, C, D, E, F, sorry about that, but so you can see the image of our sun over here, which is a, a G type of star. Um, the, essentially with the, the temperature that we can look at, the, the, the colour of the light that's produced, um, a, a cooler star or a, a lower temperature star um, is, appears red and a hotter star appears to be blue. So by looking at the different colours of light produced, that can tell us how hot that star is likely to burn. Okay, so you can see here kind of looking at the, the visible wavelengths and the sort of how the intensity that's produced. You know, so like I said, our hotter star is somewhere that's blue. It's producing much more, a much a higher intensity of the wavelengths at this end of the spectrum versus one that which is cooler, producing much higher intensity in the red end of the spectrum. So by measuring the colour that we, is produced, that helps us to determine the temperature of the star. We can also work out the composition of the star. So what elements exist inside that star? So this is just kind of showing you a little bit of a cross section of how a um, how a, a spectroscope works. You take light from the source through a slit that then it's, um, it's split with what we call a diffraction grating or a, you know, a material that it passes through that separates the different wavelengths from each other and then you look through that end and then you can see those different bands. So it's splitting into those different wavelengths and then it has a scale at this end that you can use to identify the wavelengths. So this is the sort of thing that you might see. Okay, so the light passing through this slit, you align it to, to the light source to get as much light coming through as possible, it gets split and you can see these different coloured bands. The scale which helps you to identify the wavelengths in nanometers and so you can see we've got a blue band, a green band, an orange and a red band and we can compare that with a continuous spectrum of the visible light to identify you know what colors are present um, in, in what appears to be white light. So you see these different colored bands, we can identify a specific wavelength of light using this technique. Now we have three types of spectra that, that we can see using a spectroscope. Well, first of all, we have a, what we call a continuous spectrum, so which is all the colours of, of visible light being produced at the same time, no gaps. We have what's called an emission spectrum, which is different um, wavelengths being given off by an element sample. And then we have a corresponding absorption spectrum, which is um, when we have a, the, the light from a continuous spectrum and those wavelengths being absorbed by p passing through a particular sample. So you'll notice that the gaps in this one and the lines in this one correlate. So it's, it's almost like you've kind of chopped them out and then you end up with a separate spectrum. That relates back to our Bohr model of the atom from, from way back, um, thinking about how uh, electrons jump between shells by absorbing and emitting a specific colour of light. Okay, so we have our continuous, we have emission, and we have absorption spectra that we can, we can analyze and identify. So looking at how we produce the spectrum, so we would start off with what we call a continuum source, or you know, so a source that produces a continuous spectrum, so like you would see here. It passes 
that light is, is shone through a, a, a sample of a gas of an element. In this case, we're looking at hydrogen, one of the two most abundant elements in the universe. Okay, so we're seeing up here, we're seeing its emission spectrum, the, the, the wavelengths that that sample is going to emit um, because of those transitions of the electrons. And then the, the remaining light that once those wavelengths has been absorbed is our absorption spectrum that we see over on the right here. Okay, so when we have that sample of the element, we look at the way the light passes through and it's whether it's absorbed or emitted and it gives us that element. Um, and so then, how do we actually go from that information of those colours to identify the elements? So inside the sun, we're producing a, a continuous spectrum of wavelengths. However, as that light makes its way out through the atmosphere of the, of the sun, that, that some, of those, um, some of those wavelengths are being absorbed. And so then what we can detect over here for us on Earth, we can detect the, that we can see that we see those dark bands um, in that absorption spectrum. And different elements will absorb different wavelengths in this process. And so, you know, so you can see some examples here looking at emission spectra. We've got hydrogen, helium, carbon, and oxygen all emit very specific but different wavelengths of light. So that specific pattern is essentially like a fingerprint we can use to identify that that element is there. We see a similar um, idea in an absorption spectrum. Okay, so we're seeing that those different black, um, you know, all kind of absences in that absorption spectrum correspond to identifying different elements that are there. So if we actually look at the light from the sun, you can see that rather than being continuous, what we detect, that we see all these different gaps all over the place um, based on the different elements that we can that are present inside the sun. Um, so this is just what we detect. Remember, inside the sun, it's producing all the wavelengths. It's just not all of them get out and not all of them are detected on our end. So that some of those certain wavelengths are being absorbed. The last thing that we're able to tell about a star is its velocity. So depending on how fast it's traveling and where it is, what we see is that the pattern of lines emitted from the star changes. Um, it sh we say that it shifts. Um, this is due to something called the Doppler effect. And so you'll notice that as we go from this bottom example all the way up, that we're getting a shift further and further towards the right or the red end of the spectrum here. What that tells us is that when we analyze the pattern of lines, the greater the shift is, the faster that, that star or galaxy is moving. So we can look at that in more detail to work out how fast that's traveling. We'll go over exactly why that is in a future video. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.